In 2013, I had a patient come to me with hard bumps in her cheeks. She had dermal fillers several months before without an incident. And actually, she had dermal fillers many years in a row, never having an incident. I checked her medical history and she said she did have a history of lupus, but no reaction in the past 20 years. But she thought she may have had a mild recent flare up about a month prior to filling these nodules. When I first looked for support in treating this patient, I was told that there may have been some bacteria that entered the skin at the time of treatment. The immune response related to her possibly having a recent lupus flare-up made the most sense to me. Since then, many of these nodules or granulomas can often be a result of a hyperactive or immune-mediated response. This is something we saw even more with some of the recent immunizations that we've seen in the last few years. I remember trying to get my patient through this situation and really not finding a lot of research at that time. At least what I felt was not enough research. I was stressed out with trying to get her to a full recovery. I called an industry mentor and he talked me off the ledge like he typically did when I had a situation where I felt stumped. And sure enough, this case did completely resolve. Then, just a few months later, another patient came to me with hard lumps in her hands. And then, within a week or so, she ended up with hard lumps in her face. Both places, she had dermal fillers previously. She was an actress, so imagine the pressure I felt to get her better quickly. Again, I remember that feeling that came over me just wanting to get her better as quickly as possible. I've injected dermal fillers since 2005, and it wasn't until 2013 that I saw delayed onset nodules for the first time. Since then, I've been involved in about 25 of these cases. I've also talked with a number of other physicians and nurses who have experienced this, and I've shared my experience in hopes that it helps them through their experience as well. Luckily, all the cases that I've previously seen have all completely resolved. I think this is in most part because these were reversible fillers. Once we got these fillers completely reversed, the issue was resolved. Now there's a decent amount of literature out there discussing these issues and how they've been treated and that helps support us in our practice. I'll go ahead and name some of those articles for reference so you can look into them a little bit more and hopefully they can help guide you in your future practice. Much of what the literature says is that generous amounts of Hylinex have been effective in reversing these nodules or granulomas. When I say generous amounts, I mean that even 150 plus units into a nodule to try to penetrate the hyaluronic acid to get it resolved. This takes regular and repeat injection in many cases. And in resistant cases, injectable steroids or even 5-FU have been found to be effective. Even oral colchicine, allopurinol, and hydroxychloroquine have been helpful in calming inflammation to help resolve resistant nodules. Of course, one thing to assess before reversal treatments, it's important to identify if the nodule is inflammatory. Is there redness? Does the patient need antibiotics prior to reversing? One thing to note is many of these nodules, as we're trying to reverse them, feel resistant. So what, what is exactly the threshold to changing up our treatment? There isn't an exact consensus to this. Once granulomas are present, they are resistant to penetration of Hylinex or, or hyaluronidase. So it takes multiple reversal visits to help resolve this. It can take weeks and weeks and sometimes even months to help them disappear. And sometimes the path to resolution can be completely different from one case to another. For example, one patient may experience slow shrinking after every hyaluronidase visit. The next case, a patient may have a couple subsequent visits without feeling any shrinking of those nodules. And to throw you for a loop, I've even seen cases self-resolve with no treatment at all. So what's the right choice? I personally prefer to treat all these cases when they come to me. I've tried the watch and wait method and a number of these cases have persisted for months and that can get in the way of patient's comfort and even quality of life at times. 
If you've experienced this, you're not alone. Check out some of the articles I included for reassurance. And if you found this information helpful, please like and subscribe for more.